welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to check out Vanilla OS. This is a very new distro, it only had its first stable release in December 2022, and it's a very interesting distro because it's immutable, which means that core parts of the system are locked down, they're read-only to increase security. And so before we install and test Vanilla OS, let's delve a bit more deeply into the concept of an immutable operating system. Immutable operating systems provide protection from malware, failed updates and user error by making their core components read-only. Immutable operating systems have also been around for many decades. For example, some early mobile devices ran Windows CE, which was pre-installed on read-only memory chips. So, Windows couldn't be corrupted by either the user or malware. More recently, several immutable Linux distros have been created. These include Bottle Rocket, which was developed by Amazon to run on its cloud servers. Other examples include Talos Linux, Fedora Silverblue, and most recently, Vanilla OS. This latest immutable distro is based on Ubuntu and is intended to be more beginner-friendly than its rivals. However, some prior Linux experience is still recommended. Whilst the idea of an immutable OS may be appealing, it also presents some practical challenges. Not least with the Linux root directory in Vanilla OS set to read only, how could a user save files and get updates? Well, to answer the first question, a few paths, including the user home and configuration directories, are still writable. Meanwhile, a utility called abroot facilitates updates and other essential installs. It does this by managing two root partitions, A and B, one of which is always the present root and the second always the future. As the developers of Vanilla OS explain, drivers and updates are installed by starting a transactional shell in the second root partition. If the transaction succeeds, the changes are applied using an overlay and synced with the current root on reboot. If the transaction fails, no changes are applied due to a property known as atomicity. This clever approach allows Vanilla OS to apply changes entirely in the background to a non-live partition, with successful changes delivered to the user on reboot. However, it does mean that more drive space is required as each root partition is about 20 gigabytes in size. To install applications, Vanilla OS has its own package manager called APX, as well as providing optional support for Flatpak and AppImage, with Snap support promised for the future. When using APX, applications are installed into containers. Given that Flatpaks are also containerized, and app images effectively so. This means that software installations are isolated from the core operating system. Right, now that we understand the theory of Vanilla OS, let's see how it currently performs in practice. So let's click on Get Vanilla OS 2210 like that, which takes us across to GitHub. We can scroll down and find the ISO. There it is, let's download that like that. And when the file is downloaded, I'll write it to a USB drive using Belena Etcher. And note that the USB drive needs to be at least 8 gigabytes in size, and that Vanilla OS requires a drive at least 50 gigabytes in size for installation. Right, here we are booting up from our Vanilla OS Live USB drive on my i5 test rig. And this has got an NVIDIA graphics card, so I've picked this system deliberately to see how Vanilla OS deals with that. And here we are in the live system, where we can either try Vanilla OS from the USB drive or we can do an install. I'm going to go straight to the install, like that, where I'll just pick my language. And continue. And I'll now pick the keyboard layout. There we go. I now have to sort out time. 
And then on this screen, we need to pick a disk, which will pick down there. And uh, we'll configure. And here the default option is to use the entire disk, which will be erased. There is an option here for manual partitioning, but I'm going to stick with entire disk. And with that set, we will continue. And it now wants us to confirm changes. It's going to blank this entire disk, so it's a good idea it confirms, which we will. That's OK. And now, of course, we need to set up a user. There we go, and we can continue. And there we are, we're now all set up to install Vanilla OS. And guess what? It's all done, so we can now reboot. And there we are, I'll just uh, log in. That was all rather painless. And we've now got a first setup wizard, which will take us through the rest of the process. So let's start doing that. Don't know if it got it or not. There we are, it got it that time. Let's come back to the other part of the screen. I obviously caused it some uh, trouble there. Which colour scheme should we have? We'll go with uh, light coloured for now. And now we have a choice of package manager. And here I think we'll leave both flat pack and app image in place. So we'll just click on next. We've now got applications. We've got core applications there, which is ticked. We obviously want them. I'm going to want office as well, I think. And also common utilities. Let's just check what's going on here. LibreOffice is Office, that's hardly a surprise. And um, Common Utilities, what's in there? What am I installing there? That looks pretty useful to me. We'll go with all that lot as well. And uh, next. And now it's asking do we want to install TimeShift to make snapshots of our system? Always a good idea. We'll do that. Do we want NVIDIA drivers? Yes, it's picked up with fact we've got an NVIDIA graphics card. So let's uh, install drivers for that. That's good. Do we want restricted codecs so we can play video and audio, things like that? Absolutely, we do. We'll do that as well. And finally, we've got extra settings. Do we want that there? No, I don't think we do. And uh, there we are. It's all come up. I just need to give it my password now. Da, 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 da. And it will now get on with installation 2.0. And here we are. It's now finalizing. I think if I click at the top, it'll show us what's going on. There we are. I've moved things again. Never mind. And we'll just let it uh, continue. And there we are. It's finished. All done. We can close this down. And so far, at least, this immutable OS is proving to be beginner friendly. Greetings! Here I am back again, and I've been testing things out, and everything is very responsive and stable. As you can see, I've changed the desktop background. We've got lots of choices available, although I think I've picked the most exciting, and I've also made a few scaling changes. As we can also see, Vanilla OS has a vanilla version of the GNOME desktop, and apparently it was initially called Vanilla OS because it offers a version of Ubuntu with vanilla GNOME. And if you're wondering, it is pronounced GNOME due to a double acronym and has nothing to do with tiny stone goblins. Anyway, love it or loathe it, on the vanilla GNOME desktop like this, we don't have an applications menu. Top right, there is a system menu to allow us to do things like changing power settings or to log out, shut down, things like that. But if we want to launch an application, we have to click top left and then go down to the dash, which comes up on the bottom of the screen. What a great piece of interface design that is. And then from here, we can either launch a favorite application or click on all applications and launch, for example, the calculator. Alternatively, to bring up the dash, rather than clicking on activities, we can press the super key, otherwise known as the Windows key on the keyboard. So if I do that like that, it brings up the dash and I can now just start typing. I could type, for example, Libra, and that would allow me to launch LibreOffice Writer. And talking of LibreOffice, you may recall we installed this using the first run wizard, but I found that when I first tried to run it, it wouldn't work. And the only way I got it to work was to do a reboot, so I imagine that's something to do with immutability. Anyway, back with the vanilla GNOME desktop. I should point out we don't have maximize and minimize controls on our windows, and that doesn't stop us maximizing windows. We can just click to maximize like that and click to restore again, or we can drag to maximize if I get it right like that, and we can drag, drag back like that. And if you want to minimize a window, well, that's a bit more of a challenge. 
Now, I'm sure there are people in the comments saying, Chris, you should just install GNOME tweaks, or you should just learn to work differently to embrace the vanilla GNOME desktop. However, personally, I do hope that the next release of vanilla OS includes an option in the setup wizard to restore a dock and Windows controls like we have in Ubuntu, and which would make things far more accessible to 99.99% of computer users on the planet. There is no doubt at all that Vanilla OS is a really innovative distro. It offers something new. It's a fantastic piece of development with a really beginner-friendly setup. And so it would be a great shame if the decision to stick with this Vanilla GNOME desktop prevents people from migrating to this otherwise excellent, highly secure operating system. Talking of excellence, in addition to being speedy and stable, Vanilla OS has got great documentation. Let's just uh, show you that. Let's go to the web. Using a web browser here, it's actually called web. Here we are on the Vanilla OS site. Let's go to the handbook. That's the documentation. Bring that up like that. And as I said, this is, this is really great documentation. So for example, if you want to install it in a virtual machine, there's a great guide here. And they've gone to a lot of trouble. There's lots and lots of screenshots. Everything is really, really clearly laid out. This is very beginner friendly. We've got much better documentation here with this new distro than we find for many older distros. The other thing I want to show you is if we go back to our little dash, so I want to show you the control center. Let's go across to Vanilla OS control center like that. And here in updates, I like the fact we can schedule our updates weekly or monthly. I like that. And we can turn on or off automatic updates very quickly. And we also have what are called smart updates. So the system, if we turn that on, will not update if it's very busy or if you're on a laptop and the batteries are low. The other thing we can see here is subsystem. I find this fascinating. This shows us the containers in which applications may be installed. And as you can see, we've got a subsystem here for the standard APX managed applications. APX, I now understand, should be pronounced Apex in the context of vanilla OS. And in addition to this subsystem, we could add, if we want, other subsystems for Fedora, for OpenSUSE, for Arch Linux, etc. This really is a very innovative distro. And just to show you how things work, I also want to take you to disks. Let's just go across here and go to utilities and the disks like that. And if we pick the SSD on which our system is installed, we can see we've got our two root partitions, A and B. We can see immutability in action on this system. And with this before our eyes, I think it's now time to try and install some applications. Inevitably, installing software in an immutable distro like this has the potential to be more challenging than in a regular operating system. So I therefore thought we should set ourselves the target of adding these popular applications. So how are we going to install them? Well, the easiest way is to use the graphical GNOME software stall. So let's fire it up like that and do a search for our first application, which is Firefox like that. There it is. That was nice and easy. And we'll just click on install and uh, cross our fingers. And there we are, it's finished. And does it work straight away? Oh, something else is happening. Let me see it, go on. There we are, and uh, live demos are always fun, aren't they? Is it gonna open? Yes, that's working absolutely fine. So let's try and add the other applications I wanted to add in, should be fairly straightforward. We'll start with GIMP. There we are, and install. Lovely jubbly. And we'll now go back and do uh, Inkscape. Inkscape like that, which is a fantastic vector graphics package, a great Adobe Illustrator alternative, so we'll install that as well. Very good. And we'll now go back and do the Audacity Audio Editor. Fantastic. And next here we'll install the Caden Live Video Editor. Once again, we seem to have success. So we'll now just add in Solitaire. There we go. And finally, we'll do a search for Blender. 
Although, before we launch this, let's just check if anything else has worked. Let's just look in our applications because things have been added in. Are they all sitting there? Have we got things that will run? Can we run up, for example, uh, GIMP? It seems we can. Let's just try some of the others. I'm being very impressed with this so far. I thought it'd be difficult to get things working in this immutable distro, but it seems that's not the case. Let's just take those as the defaults here in Inkscape. That's absolutely fine. Yes, Inkscape is clearly working as well. This is uh, very good. What else do we install? I've forgotten already. What else are on my list? Oh, Audacity, of course. Is Audacity going to work? Bit of first run plugin stuff, but I'm sure it'll come up. Looks like it's going to work. It is. That's, that's fine as well. And finally here, I think we had something else, which was, oh, it was Caden Live, wasn't it? The video editor. Actually, that'll be an interesting one to uh, check because Caden Live normally installs a few things on first boot, but no, no, all there. This is, this is very impressive. So the only thing I've got left to install is Blender. So let's press the final install button. Let Blender install on our system. I hope you've been keeping up with my recent Blender tutorials. And there we are, that's finished as well. Hopefully Blender is now down in our little set of applications. Is it gonna be down here somewhere? There it is. Can we now run up Blender? It looks like we can. Oh, it's the latest version just come out, isn't it? Very, very exciting. So we'll just have to run through that. There we are, that's fine. And we can do the normal uh, Blendery stuff, messing around with a cube. That's very exciting. But you may be thinking, you forgot Solitaire, Chris. Of course I didn't forget Solitaire. Would I forget Solitaire? That could not possibly be the case. It's over here somewhere, isn't it? Where's Solitaire gone? I've lost it. I've gone past it in my excitement. It must be here somewhere. There it is. And as it comes up and I resize things for optimum play, I would just point out we've just managed to install a load of applications very easily in this immutable distro. And we haven't even gone near the terminal. Although if you want to install applications in the terminal, you can use the command line Apex Package Manager, where you would install things like, for example, Blender by typing the command apx install Blender. No need for a sudo because Apex works in user mode. Anyway, I'm not going to test to see if Solitaire is working properly. That might take me some time. And so we'll now speed on through to the end of the video. Vanilla OS is a bold attempt to create a new immutable distro. Personally, I'm not going to be installing it as my own daily driver just yet, but I am very interested in the concept of an immutable operating system. And so I'm going to keep a close eye on the development of Vanilla OS. But what about you? Are you attracted to the idea of an immutable operating system? Do let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.